Hello friends and welcome back to our series of tutorial on advanced embedded system development. These training courses targets advanced topics on embedded system like TCP IP stacks, real time operating systems, 32 bit processors, graphical user interface, TFT LCDs, memory card and mass storage, digital audio and much much more. So come join us and grow your skills, advance your career and move ahead in life, build your dream products and launch your startup. Hello and welcome back to the lecture. Uh, this is the third part of the tutorial and the aim of this tutorial series is to interface W5500 Ethernet chip with the STM32. So this W5500 is a very popular Ethernet interface chip and the STM32 is also a very popular microcontroller, a very popular ARM based microcontroller. It is a very powerful microcontroller. So the aim of this tutorial series is to interface our STM32 microcontroller with the Ethernet controller chip which is W5500. So now let us begin this third part also. In the last lecture we have downloaded the official driver code from the Wiznet's website and then we have created the STM32 cube ID project and then we added the official library files to this our new STM32 cube ID project and after that we created some low level SPI input and output function for STM32 that enabled the driver code to access the actual chip through SPI port. We have already completed all this part. And finally we have created an overall initialization function to initialize everything in the system. And we have done all this in the last two part of this lecture. And now in the third part what we are going to do. In the third part we are going to configure the host. So here the host is our STM32 uh, which is connected to the network. So any device which is connected to a network is called a host, a host in that network. So in this part we are going to configure this host our STM32 so that it can properly connect to the network uh, which is our Ethernet because this W5500 chip provides a connection through Ethernet and through this Ethernet we can also access the internet uh, how that we will see later uh, because if the network uh, uh, to which we are connecting our host it is uh, connected to internet also then our host that is STM32 will also gain access to the internet and after configuring our host and after making a proper connection with our local area network and through that uh, local area network uh, we are also able to access the internet because this our local area network it will be having an internet gateway through which we will be accessing the internet and after doing that after doing establishing a successful connection with our local area network our LAN or the ethernet then we will open a TCP socket another host in the same network and this another host will be a PC that will be also on the same network that is our same local area network and then we will send some data to this host this host PC and we will use a TCP server in that PC to view the received data and uh, again the details will be given later on so this is the overall uh, things that we are going to do in this part this part 3 of this tutorial so now what do we mean by configuring the host that will I will tell you now what do we mean by configuring the host so before a host on an IP network that is internet protocol network can participate in that network and transfer data that means to send data to another host and to receive data from another host and this host may be on local network or far off on the internet also uh, in order to do this type of transfer it first must be configured so now let us see what do we mean by configuration. Uh, 
for that that means for by configuration i means the host uh, in this case this host is our stm32 microcontroller equipped with a w5500 ethernet controller so this host this embedded host this embedded system it needs to know some data about this network the current network um, which is um, which this uh, embedded system is going to be connected to it needs some data about that network in order to become part of that network it needs some data and what need data it need uh, that i will show you so what information does the host need what information our stm32 need in order to become the part of our network and whenever i tell network this network is our small home or office network uh, which has a few pcs and uh, it uh, and our embedded host also that means our stm32 and this network is also connected to internet through a gateway so this is our small network so in order to in, uh, if a new member is going to be connected to this host and this new member is our stm32 when it is going to be connected to our home network our small office network then it needs to know some information about this network so what information does it need it uh, it needs its own ip address first thing first and the foremost the most important thing uh, this host it should know its own ip address uh, because all the host in our network a small uh, home or office network every host uh, like your mobile phone like your desktop pc printer connected to this network every host in this network has its own unique ip address so when a new host that is our stm32 is going to connect to this network it should know its own ip address all right and the second thing it uh, needs to know is is the subnet mask of this network and what is this subnet mask uh, this i will also discuss later uh, these two things these two important things they are needed in uh, even if it needs to connect in a local area network and if this host that means our stm32 it needs to access not only this local area network that means your small home or office network which only has a few pcs and if it wants to access the whole internet that is it uh, if it wants to uh, communicate with google or facebook or the entire internet or any host that is very far away maybe in different country maybe in different server so in that case it needs to connect with this uh, not only it needs a connection to local area network but also to the wide area network and this wide area network is the internet and if it wants to connect to the internet it needs two more data and these two more net data are like this it needs the ip address of a gateway so this gateway is the actual thing which provide uh, connection outside our local area network so this uh, task is done by the gateway that uh, in detail i will all later on i will give more detail about this gateway thing and secondly it also needs the ip address of a domain name server that is dns uh, in uh, so you should be knowing that uh, uh, every host in the internet they have uh, some human readable textual name uh, that is converted to an ip address and this is done through this domain name service so it should uh, this uh, our host it should know the uh, ip address of a domain name server through this domain name server it can translate any address like google.com or facebook.com or youtube.com it translate those human readable address into their ip address so that it can send and receive data uh, from those host also so this information is required in order to properly configure our host and get it connected to the local area network as well as the internet now the question comes in our mind how does our host that is our stm32 gets all these informations the information that we have just discussed how it gets all these informations so basically there are two methods for this the host configuration it can be done in two different method the first one is the static method and the second one is the dynamic method uh, but in this w5500 chip uh, this dynamic host configuration is bit difficult uh, so for this basic tutorial i am not going to use the dynamic host configuration rather i will be going to use this static host configuration because this is much more easy and we will uh, write the code that is uh, very easy to write and we will be able to communicating in a very small amount of time will not uh, spend lot of time writing lots of code that is why i am uh, for um, this first very basic tutorial i am not going uh, by this dynamic method i am going with this static method so what is this static method the static method it is uh, nothing uh, very simple uh, 
uh, in this static method what we are going to do we are uh, going to put all the information that is required in order to get connected and we are uh, just putting this all this information uh, in the simple c file in our main.c file this is our main.c file and we are statically we are simply typing this all this value in our this c file and we are using the static values so what values i am putting uh, first is the ip address uh, this will be the ip address of this host that is this stm32 its ip address so i have manually typed this ip address here uh, that is why i am telling this is a static method and this is sn the second member sn is the subnet mask i have again i have manually put the subnet mask here and this gw it stands for gateway uh, i have already told you what is a gateway and uh, the address of this gateway again i have manually put here and the last one this is the dot dns this is the domain name server address uh, here i have put uh, 888 which is a very common domain name server uh, this server is owned by google google's domain name server i have put here so this way I am statically putting all these values in the C file and then I am initializing our chip. Uh, this, that is why this method is called a static configuration method. Uh, but you can see that manually we have to type all this at compile time and, and later on this cannot be changed. But uh, this is the easy method to get started with W5500 that is why I am calling this static method. Now let us see how we will get the values of these variables in order to set up our network in order to configure our network and properly connect our embedded host that is w5500 to our small network so before that let us see how we will create our small network uh, for this experiment and to create the network what things we will need so here is a list of things that we will need to create our small network the first thing which we will need is an internet router and this internet router has several LAN ports and uh, to these LAN ports we connect several hosts uh, like our personal computer PC or our embedded host like W5500 all these are connected to this the available LAN ports on this internet router and this internet router also have uh, this Wi-Fi connectivity so some host can also be connected using a wireless technology like Wi-Fi so your PC if your PC or your laptop is having Wi-Fi connectivity then we can connect uh, to this our small network without using any wire through Wi-Fi also and one important thing this uh, router has it has a WAN port uh, which is the wide area network port through which this uh, our router this our network all the host in our network is able to access the wide area network that is the internet global internet uh, so there is a specific WAN port and to this WAN port and another modem like a fiber modem is connected uh, to our network in this way we are getting uh, internet connectivity in our home or small uh, this office network uh, using this WAN port only and uh, this internet router it also performs the role of a gateway and now what is a gateway that I will uh, discuss later on and in addition to this internet router uh, we will we also need a LAN cable and uh, we will uh, use this LAN cable to connect our W5500 to our small network and after that we will need a windows based pc and this pc will be a second host in our network uh, uh, because to test our network we need uh, at least two hosts so first one is our embedded host our w5500 and second host which is a windows based pc so in this way we will create a very small network very small ethernet network a lan a small home network uh, in which we will uh, test our setup we will try sending and receiving data uh, from uh, host to host in this small network so here in the image you can see a typical internet router and here uh, you can see a group of four ethernet ports so this uh, small router uh, enables us to connect up to four wired hosts so this host could be a PC, a laptop or even your our embedded host like W5500 and uh, here you can see the antenna and this antenna is for wireless access for Wi-Fi connectivity. So we can also connect a wireless host to our this small network also. 
and this one this final port uh, which is uh, separated from this group of four ports uh, this is the wide area network that is the wan access port and this one is connected to uh, another modem uh, like a fiber modem through which we access the internet and here you can see a uh, lan cable uh, this is also called a cat5 or cat6 cable we can use the cat5 or cat6 cable with which has rj45 connector at both the ends so here you can see the rj45 connectors uh, these are uh, one end is connected to our host that is our pc or laptop and the second is, end is connected to our uh, this internet router here it is connected and now let us see how we are going to create our tiny network and in the heart in the center of our network is this internet router and here you can see our first host that is a personal computer pc which is a windows based pc and this is connected to our network uh, through a cable and here is the second host which is the embedded host the w5500 module uh, this is the second host in our small network and this in, in this small network which we are going to create for experimentation it has only two hosts one is the embedded host and one is the personal computer and here you can see this pc is connected uh, uh, to our internet router through an rj45 uh, this cable the lan cable it is connected and uh, you can also connect uh, this host that uh, our pc using the wireless link also if you are you can connect your laptop using Wi-Fi also if uh, there is no difference in both the case it will work very fine and second here you can see we have connected our embedded host that is W5500 module to the second port of our router in this way we have created our network so this small network only has these two hosts one is the PC and one is the our embedded host so our embedded host that is W5500 will send some data to our network and this data will be received and displayed by our PC and finally here you can see the WAN port it uh, gives access to the rest of the world so the rest of the internet is uh, available through this port this WAN port wide area network port it is connected to the whole internet the global internet we can access any site like uh, Google like uh, YouTube anything uh, which is available in our internet uh, we can also have set up our own servers and we can access those server also through this internet port